Hey there, it's Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing, joining you again for another edition of Social Media Pie, where I bring in inspiring people to inform and educate you. And very excited with me today, I have my headshot photographer that I've invited to join us here today, Scott Lawrence. Hey, Scott, how are you doing here today? Hi, Brenda. How's it going? I'm doing well. Good. We're at the start of a week and, uh, you know, Mondays has a little bit of a different feeling now, doesn't it, Scott? <laughs> it does. Yep. 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 Yeah, uh, it's just kind of one day after the next and <laughs> going, but that's OK. <laughs> I create a little bit of a separation like I, I get up early in the morning on the weekdays still and the weekends. I, I sleep in a little bit, but Monday, it just it still has a Monday feel to it, I think, you know, kind of the start yeah. of the week and everything. Right? Yeah. yeah, it takes a little bit of extra time, need a little, extra, little more coffee. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the coffee, definitely. So I'm going to pop up on screen here today. Our topic for the show today is how to get how and why to get an amazing professional headshot. And this is kind of what Scott Business is all about. Um, but before we get into that discussion, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background. So if you're watching us on LinkedIn, if you're watching us on Facebook, first thing I want to mention, you know, you can kind of keep a little ticker running below here. I'd love it if you guys could comment below. When you do so, let us know where you're watching from. Are you in Metro Detroit, which is where Scott and I are located? Are you some other place in Michigan or throughout the country? We'd love to know where you're watching us from. And if you're watching us in playback later, let us know you're watching in playback as well. If you have any questions for Scott as we're talking today, you can drop those in the comments below as well. Um, about a half hour or so into the show, I will take the opportunity to say hi to you guys. I'll give you some shout outs there and then we'll be able to answer some of your questions as well. So when um, a little bit of background, how uh, Scott and I know each other and we we got online a few minutes before the show started and I was trying to remember, Scott, where it was we met. I feel like it was a Troy Chamber event. I don't think it was Sterling Heights Chamber because I think you're, you were, you lived in Rochester or, or, or in Troy, I think is where yeah. we first met. I seem to remember Troy Chamber. Do you remember yeah, that? I, well, because I, I live in Rochester, but okay. and I, I had started with the Rochester Chamber and then I jumped into the Troy Chamber. So yeah, I think it was probably one of the early Troy events that we probably met, I'm assuming. And you're you're an ambassador with the Troy Chamber now, aren't you? I am, yeah. I've been an ambassador for a little bit more than a year now. Yeah. Okay. What is that what is that Troy Chamber ambassador? What does that mean? Uh, so so basically we're kind of the non staff representatives of the chamber. So um, as new members join or somebody's thinking about joining, you know, we're there to kind of welcome people to networking events and then also to just to kind of give them our perspective as another business owner about mm -hmm. what it means to be in the chamber and kind of what the chambers can do for you. So. That's awesome. And I think it's nice that you're actually not a member of the Troy Chamber because of the fact that you're coming from the perspective of as a member of the chamber, what benefits are you getting out of it as opposed to a sales pitch, which right. some people might perceive, right? Even though I do have to say, um, Sheila and, you know, and Tara and the rest of the team there, um, they do a really great job. I don't, I don't feel like they're salespeople. I feel like they're really relationship yeah. builders and they, they really are there for their members. So a little bit of a shout right. out. No, I, yeah, absolutely. And I think they, um, they're, they have a very good perspective of that. Um, but yeah. I, you know, I know from my own experience, it's always nice to just hear somebody that's exactly in your shoes, even though they do a, pretty good job of understanding that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So so Scott and I, we met at some point, I don't know, a couple of years back, we met at some point in the Detroit Chamber. And then I think we ended up getting together for coffee. And um, we were kind of like, well, gosh, you're a headshot photographer. I help people with LinkedIn profiles. And it was kind of like, you guys remember that commercial from way back in the days? It was like, his chocolate fell into my peanut butter. My peanut butter's in your chocolate. And the Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups were created, right? <laughs> right. right. But I kind of feel like it was the same way for me and Scott. We don't compete necessarily. We complement each other. And mm -hmm. we started going, gosh, well, and I started going, I need a new headshot. Because I think at the time, it wasn't too long after I had left my corporate job. And I was, I was branching out as an entrepreneur, as a consultant. And I wanted to change you know, kind of my LinkedIn profile for myself. And part of that was I wanted a new headshot photo, which I felt was more representative of, of who I am as a person and who I am as a consultant. And Scott was like, I think you had not long, I think, where, didn't you used to live in Chicago or New York? Where did you yeah, move? Chicago, yeah. Chicago. Because 
I, I seem to recall it was like you were newer to Michigan at the time. And part of the reason you were joining the chambers is you were trying to branch out and get, you know, build up your name here in Metro Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I remember the conversation going something like, well, I need a new headshot. And you're like, well, I need, I need to like figure out how to use LinkedIn. And, you know, at the time we said, well, why don't we help each other? You know, um, you, you, you know, agreed to take a headshot photo. I agreed to give you some LinkedIn training. We kind of helped each other out. Yeah, and, right. um, I think as a result, we've we've both grown stronger. I mean, the, absolutely, the yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because I think at the time when I had just moved, I hadn't I'd been on LinkedIn a long time um, yeah. in my corporate career, um, and when I jumped into photography full time, I kind of let LinkedIn kind of by I left it by the wayside there for a while just because yeah. it reminded me too much of my corporate, corporate. <laughs> corporate yeah personality, yeah. and so it's nice to kind of come back around now and kind of use it for different purposes. And it, you know, I think it's a lot, the, the platform has grown quite a bit, but yeah. when I joined LinkedIn originally, I remember it was, it was almost a taboo uh, kind of thing in the workplace. And yeah. I don't think the network was even like, you couldn't see who was connected to anybody else because yeah. they didn't want recruiters poking around and like it. So it was a whole different mentality back then. Yeah. Uh, true. It, it, the, the taboo thing that you're you're speaking about, I think there's probably other people on this session who are watching this and they probably would agree with you. You know, some people think, well, LinkedIn is a job search website and I don't right. want to be active on the platform because I don't want my boss or coworkers thinking I'm looking for a job. Right. And, you know, the, the counsel I always give my clients is, you know, LinkedIn is actually a professional networking site. And there's a small area dedicated to jobs and for job seekers, but it's actually used more by people for networking purposes than it is by job seekers. So right. you know, once people get over that kind of psychological hump and they really embrace the platform, they start to kind of unlock the power of LinkedIn and they start to realize the potential for the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, potential on it. And then uh, the yeah. other thing too that um, I don't know I've been meaning to ask you too is have you used the um, any of the LinkedIn learning uh, yeah. piece of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's funny because I've been a LinkedIn, I, you know, whenever I train people on LinkedIn, I always train them on the free version because I want to, you know, I, I don't want people to spend money on things they don't need. But yeah. part of the reason, you know, when you upgrade to LinkedIn Premium, you get some additional benefits and one of which is access to LinkedIn Learning. And there's a lot of great courses that you can complete, you know, online training and things like that in LinkedIn Learning. And yeah, I, I have, you know, I, I, I watch them sometimes and sometimes I almost, it's like a podcast, like I'll play it in the background as I'm working on a client project or, you know, working on an email campaign or something. Yep. But um, yeah, I find there are, they have found some really great experts that they're bringing into LinkedIn learning. So a little plug for, for those folks that are premium members, or if you have sales navigator, you have access to LinkedIn learning, definitely check, check it out. A really great um, resource. So, so I want to get into the discussion here, Scott. And, um, you know, when, when you and I met, you know, we kind of were, we're talking about how can we help each other? And I have learned so many great tips from you over the years about, you know, headshot photography. And I, I now, um, I try to get a new headshot photo about every other year and I'm due for another one. And before yep. the coronavirus hit, do you remember we're it was, planning. I wasn't it like December or January. It was like early in the year, maybe February, if that, but it was early. It wasn't like we were thinking anything was going to happen, but I, I reached out to you and um, my first professional headshot photo, I'm going to see if I can find it to, to bring up a little bit later for you guys. But my first professional headshot photo post corporate was me wearing a pink blouse, um, magenta pink, which is my brand color. And then last the last photo from two years ago was wearing a bright blue jewel tone blouse or, or dress mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I need to think about what I wear next time around. And, and, you know, we as ladies, our hair color changes, our hairstyle changes. Um, and I usually, when I book, you know, working with a photographer, I make sure I have my hair done, my, my you know, or at least my hair color updated. My roots are growing out. <laughs> hey, my, my color changes too. <laughs> your color, well, your color changes. I mean, even men, you know, we get gray hairs over time, but I want to make sure that I look my professional best on camera. So when I talked to Scott, whenever it was earlier this year, I was like, He's like, well, let's talk about, you know, maybe spring, May, June. I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. And, um, you know, it's not going to happen right now right. because your business is not, I mean, you're not considered an essential business. So you, you can't even do headshot photography right now, right, no, Scott? Uh, yeah, this, my studio is closed. Um, I mean, I've gone in a few times just to check on a few things, uh, yeah. run a few prints through my printer and make sure everything's still there. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, 
you know, I, I can't operate right now. So, I mean, really, I'm just, I'm, at the moment, I'm taking um, some Zoom consultations. Um, those yeah. have been pretty good, actually. It's just a way to kind of connect with people that are that are already thinking, you know, because, I mean, I think- Planning ahead, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking towards the other side. Um, yeah. And so then that's been good. Um, so we can start uh, planning a session, um, mm -hmm. kind of talking about wardrobe, kind of look somebody's looking for. Um, and I think it also is going to be more effective once we do open because we're not going to have that opportunity, I think, to sit down and just hang around in the studio so much. So yeah. in that respect, there, you know, it's good to kind of get that planning piece out of the way. Yeah. So for, for background and I'll have you kind of introduce yourself a little bit. Talk, so tell us who who is Scott Lawrence for those who are watching right now. They don't know who you are. What do you do? And then we'll get into this conversation about the headshot tips. So I am uh, a headshot photographer and I do um, probably 95% of my business is all professional and corporate headshots. Uh, a lot of LinkedIn profile pictures, a lot of small business website uh, updates, a lot of, um, uh, there's, uh, there's Sheila. Sheila. We got uh, our short team representative there going. Yep, yep. <laughs> A um, lot of um, like business, uh, what I call custom stock photography. So if you're, you know, you're a small business, you can show, you know, your your own people and your own facilities um, without using stock photography, and that kind of gives you a little bit more personality as a small business. I like that, yeah. Because um, it's so easy to use stock photography, and there's nothing wrong with stock photography, but I think when you have the opportunity to show your own place, your own people, yeah, uh, people will. We'll take notice. It's it's very it's a very nuanced thing, but I you know I'm a big believer in you. Let's use real people, yep. even if they're staged and set up, because there's you can tell when it's a model versus yep. when it's a real human being, right? Yep. And the real human beings look different than people who are professional models. And yep. I think there's there's a component of marketing nowadays that you want to be believable, so you help to, your clients to achieve that with right. With, creation of a stock photography library, but using real people. Right. There's a fine line between overproduced and yeah. authentic. And, you know, we, we find that right, right balance for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I think, and you can attest to working with um, somebody that knows how to post people and, you know, pose non-models, um, you really can come quite a bit in terms of, you know, what you can get in terms of the images that you can use for your own uh, marketing and that sort of thing. Yeah. That's one of my favorite, um, really one of my favorite things about my general client demographic is that, you know, I work with people that are not models and they're not mm -hmm. used to being in front of the camera and they're not used to posing. And, and I like to, you know, show them the best picture they've ever had of themselves. And it, yeah. it um, it's great. Yeah. And you do a really good job of it. I, yeah. I, you know, working, having worked with you, you make people feel comfortable and um, even like the little techniques that you do in your headshot photo sessions where you, you'd be like, make some goofy faces, you know? And I'm like, you know, make goofy. Yep. You're like, no, literally like, you know, yep. make your goofy faces. And you snapped a couple and then you sent those to me in my, um, my proofs. And I ended up actually, and then I ended up using a couple of those and I, you gave me the digital versions of them and I actually use them on social media. Now I've got like yep. a LinkedIn, you know, I, I call it, um, six tips for unlocking your LinkedIn. I can't remember, but I say six mistakes that make me cringe. And my face is like, you know, like that's what yep, the photo yep. is. And it was like one of the photos from your headshot session, but you even put together like a little, uh, it's like some, and I know you have people sign off on use of their photos too. So they're aware you're doing this, yep. but it's, it creates some personality because this, the corporate headshots can be kind of stiff and impersonal. But when you have these, that there are people just acting goofy. And I know you've done this with Sheila and your other clients as well. It just adds that element of personality that makes us people, right? Right, right, and it 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 totally does it. It brings out the and even if you're not planning on using one of the outtakes, um, you know, I tell people in the session like the the session is not the time to filter or edit your looks. You know, we're yeah. and so one of the or kind of the idea behind that is that it gets you to kind of bring your facial expressions up and down, and it gives you a range yeah. of expressions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those transitions are really the best, most authentic uh, picture. So I do get a lot of people mm -hmm. that say, well, why would I want to make a silly face? And like, <laughs> That's not the point. Yeah. Um, the goal is to kind of get a range of expressions, because otherwise you can you can come back from a session, um, even time where we've spent you know half an hour, 40 minutes. And if somebody's trying to have a real forced look, then you've got just, just this consistent expression. Yeah whole session and it just really kills the variability. Yeah. 
So, and I like, I mean, the technique, I think too, when you're, when you're getting your headshot photo taken, um, and I, and I'm going to joke with my husband a little, he's in the other room. He can't come in here and complain to me right now, but we tried to do some pictures of ourselves. I was in the Facebook, like love your husband challenge last week where I had to like post every day, a picture of him mm -hmm. and certain pictures I pulled from like our wedding day and family photos. And then others, I like did a selfie of the two of us. And when he's a very, you know, he does, he has a nice smile. He's a very personable person. But when I put a camera in front of him, I say smile, he goes from like being normal to, you know, yeah. like this. And I joke with him. I'm like, it's the Chandler Bing. Yeah. Um, what was it? Their engagement photo. Do you remember that episode of Friends where he was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like why are you smiling like that? Like, just be normal with me. But yep. that's what happens when you're in a headshot photo session, right? Scott, you get executives who are, they're trying to look a certain way and they, they end up and they get kind of clenched. Right. Yep. And then I think just by being silly and crossing your eyes and, you know, just making silly, it helps to relax you. So then when you say, okay, yeah. smile again, you can, you know, yep. you can be more natural and it can yep. look like a natural photo. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. some, exe some executives have a better, you know, stage presence than others. Um, but it, it, it makes a big difference to kind of, you know, you just, you want to work with whoever you're working with that's, that's mm -hmm. good photography. Um, and I would say kids too, the, the kind of the clench, the say cheese look that, that's probably <laughs> my number one pet peeve with um, photographing kids, you know, for anything, whether you're using your phone or, you know, any camera. Yeah. It's like, you know, kids have great expressions on their own. Like, yeah, you don't sure. need to tell them to say cheese. And it, it just like, I, I just cringe every time, you know, I see somebody hold up a, a phone and then the kid goes <laughs> yeah right so yeah painful. so yeah. painful to watch yeah yeah too funny well let's get into this conversation and i appreciate it. sheila I just she just dropped another comment um creating consistency so you you add pictures of their entire team and they're using it on their website and and yep. there's really nice consistency and i've had this in other organizations i work with where um we had one photographer do this executive's photos and another photographer do this executive's photos and, other, and then you put them all together on the website and they look like they're from different photographers the lighting is different the background's different yep. the effects, i mean just everything looks different so i mean part of your your when you're a, a marketing marketing your organization you're creating your brand you want to create some consistency around it so mm -hmm. let's get into this conversation now scott i know you've shifted a little bit because of your your business what's happening to offering a lot of really great tips and resources. I know you got a great video library going, mm -hmm. um, helping people to understand how and why they should get a great professional head headshot. So let's, let's jump into that conversation now. Yeah. So lately, um, I, well, just to back up, the first thing I did, um, was just start to figure out all the, the SBA, loan options and all that you know all the the small business aid because i knew that was going to be the most important like it was pretty clear to me yeah. that you know things weren't going to change you know we weren't going to be back to normal anytime soon so right mm -hmm. um i i jumped on that and you know shout out to the chambers too that you know they were some of the best local resources for all that stuff um in terms of kind of getting out there um so then once i felt comfortable that i you know i did what at all i could do on that sort of that front um I started looking at, you know, what I had. So I, you know, in terms of the, the content that I'd already produced, um, right. and that was um, a couple of sessions that I had just completed. Um, we actually did a, a little, kind of a styled shoot with one of my makeup artists um, that I partner with. And so we did, you know, kind of a full, usually a little more elaborate of a shoot than, than I typically do for a lot of clients. It's, so think of it like a like a personal branding session or something like that, where um, we took someone and kind of give them a whole range of looks. So kind of casual to even something like a more formal look. Mm -hmm. So I made a couple of videos out of that. Um, I used, you know, some behind the scenes stuff. So that's, you know, that was continuing to kind of add some value uh, for my social platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can actually see that. Look at that. Look at that. That's my circa uh, 2018 look, right? <laughs> yeah. So the video I think that I'm talking about is if you scroll down, I think it's actually on the bottom of that page. On the homepage there? Um, yeah, if you, let's see, keep going, keep going. Right, I think it's right yeah, right there. Okay. So that's one that just kind of shows the process, um, mm -hmm. the, the full service experience. Um, so I put together that mm -hmm. and um, you can see there, you know, Hair and makeup. Hair and makeup. Um, That's nice. The best version of you. I love it. Yeah. You want to. You don't want to just. It's. It's kind of like I remember people saying like your wedding day. You should look your your 
personal best and in your headshot right. photography it should be the same way you should look your professional best professional best from today yeah. not 20 years ago right right yeah. right today that's a really important yeah. point yeah yeah um so and then we did a little uh a little glamour look here at the end that was fun uh yeah was she a model or i mean she's you know she's not wearing sleeves so she doesn't look like it's a no, office photo it's, right no, no. <laughs> No, no, I I rarely work with models. Every once in a while, um, I'll work with a model, but yeah, I like yeah. working with real people. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I went back and um, I had a bunch of uh, YouTube content that I'd started creating over the last maybe six months. And um, I was actually, so one of the content strategies I know that you talk about, and um, I think it's talked about quite a bit now, is just the idea of using kind of recycling content. Yes. Uh, because just because, you know, you know, you've posted it on one platform and you think, okay, I've done that. That doesn't mean that people that follow you on other platforms, you know, it's not new to them. Right. Um, so there's no reason you can't do that. And so one of the things I try to do is anything that I produce, I try to think of how I can use it on multiple platforms. Okay. Um, so I went back and re-edited some of my YouTube content um, yeah. and posted, started posting my, on uh, LinkedIn. Uh -huh. And I sent you a quick note and I said, you know, I forget exactly what I said, but you mentioned one of the important things was to start dropping in the captions too. Yes. Um, and that's great. You know, YouTube talks about that and LinkedIn too. And one of the reasons why we do captions um, mm -hmm. is that you can, um, uh, you know, it's good for search engine optimization. So, yeah. you know, Google or LinkedIn, you know, sees that you're talking about whatever it is you're you're talking about, and then that yeah. helps you in the search um, for that content. So, um, but the other important reason, and I was kind of approaching this from a marketing person, yeah. right? And um, what I what I shared with Scott, he was sending the videos. I'm like, they're great, mm -hmm. but you know, when you post them on on LinkedIn, make sure you up upload them organically because LinkedIn yep. prefers right. native video versus external links. And then the other right. thing is have the captions be burned in, meaning they always appear on screen. Because there's a lot of us, um, even when we're, when we're in the office, we might click mute because we don't want to have videos playing in the background. But even when we're at home, my husband will be like, can you turn that video down? Or the kids are like, that's too loud. So you watch the video on mute. And when it's scrolling through your feed, you know, you might see a talking head or something, but you can't see what the person's saying. But when you have the captions, then you start reading it and that might intrigue you to stop and pause and watch, either watch the whole thing muted or unmute it and then turn it on and watch it again. So I think it, and like, I think you tried that technique and I think it worked out pretty good, didn't it? Yep. Yeah. The, the organic reach was, was so much better on LinkedIn, honestly, than, uh, than YouTube. So that was uh that was a good trick. Cause I'd played, you know, there's, you know, YouTube strategies that say you want everything to go to YouTube. Right. Um, but you know, I don't think I'm going to be a YouTube star anytime soon. Yeah, you're not so. trying to be a professional YouTuber. No. You're just trying to get your video or your, your photography tips out there. Right. No, no. And you know, really the main, I, you know, the main audience are my local clients and yeah. you know, I don't need millions of them. Um, and that, that's all I'm trying to trying to do is just present, you know, the, the tips basically that are what mm -hmm. were previously blog posts in a video format. Yeah. Um, and it's worked out pretty well. That's awesome. And I love your thumbnails here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull the screen up a little bit larger yeah. so you can kind of see they, yeah. but these are some really great videos here. I mean, we had, we've had a couple of conversations. You can see the upper right hand corner. We were, we were yeah, like, we had a kind of an impromptu of thing, but yeah. Um, yeah. you know, when to update your headshot, how to print your headshot, how to upload mm -hmm. your link, your headshot to LinkedIn. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you're doing all of this to help people because I, you know, Scott, I know this is what you do for a living and it seems super, super easy for you, but there's so many times where people like, they don't know, like how, okay, you gave me the photos. How do I upload that to my LinkedIn yep. or how do I print it? You know, what do I need to know? How much does it cost? I mean, yep. these are the questions that you answer this come almost like a FAQ, but it's a video library, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I said, it's, I mean, it's, you never know what kind of tech experience or just familiarity with, you know, working with images people have, I mean, young, old, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I work with a lot of younger people that aren't technically savvy in how you edit or crop images or whatnot. Um, right. So I make sure, you know, that's part of the service I provide is if you need, um, you know, for example, social banners, I mean, you talk about that a lot is that, mm -hmm. you know, you have a nice widescreen uh, banner and sometimes you need, uh, you need help getting an image formatted to, to, to fit that. And so that's yeah. something I can do without any, any trouble. Yeah, because you're you're knowledgeable, and I have to say, Scott, you're so approachable, and I never felt like I never feel like when I come to question with you, Scott, you like I don't ever feel like an idiot. Like we're asking, like so other people are like, I feel dumb asking, but how do I? 
I know you sent me the link to download my photos, but how do I do that? And then how do I get it up onto LinkedIn? And you're like, oh no, it's totally fine. You know, it's a common question. I get that asked all yeah. the time. And yeah. you walk people through, and I think people appreciate that you're um, that you're knowledgeable, but that you're helpful and friendly in the approach that you're taking working with them. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. And then uh, you know, I would add too that so further repurposing the content. I think you saw my other video the other day. I, I posted mm -hmm. one of these to uh, um, Instagram Live. I yeah. Figured. I was talking to a couple of local realtors about um, you know how they were getting getting kind of started back up, and one had sent me an Instagram Live video, and I figured, okay, if realtors are on Instagram Live, I it's time I put some videos up there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So all I had to do there was just kind of re. So actually, it was took a little bit of work to kind of recrop the video. So mm -hmm. I wanted the organic, you know, the native vertical video, which will freak a lot of like traditional photographers out. Yeah. And videographers. It's up and down. It's kind of like a portrait, right. you know, rectangular right. view, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I was able to kind of reformat it in uh, my editing software, and so threw it right up there, and you know, that's mm -hmm. good too. Yeah. So as you're working with people on, you know, getting them ready for that amazing headshot, mm -hmm. you know, what tips do you have for people? Um, you know, so when I talk to people about getting ready and, you know, kind of, you know, people stress out about what to wear yeah. um, and, you know, hair and makeup is one thing. But, you know, I think that the thing to remember is that it's not about what you're wearing so much. Um, you know, you're not, I tell people, you're not modeling the clothes, you're not selling the clothes. Yeah. Um, so you want to wear what's most comfortable to you um, mm -hmm. and what, you, you know, again, what you normally wear. It's not, you know, I get a lot of attorney clients and, um, you know, they come in all buttoned up and then as soon as we're done, you know, they rip the ties off and, you know, they're going back to an open collar um, shirt with maybe a blazer. And I often will say, you know, kind of, well, why don't we just shoot that yeah. look too? Because yeah. that's how people are used to seeing you. Um, and so, you know, I think you want to wear what's most comfortable to you and how you normally appear. Okay. Um, and that goes with, uh, that's one of the things I talk about with glasses too, is people go back and forth about whether they should wear, wear their glasses or not. And I always say, you know, if you normally wear your glasses, if you, you know, if people expect to see you in your glasses, then we definitely want to do some, some pictures, um, with you in your glasses. Um, one of the things that people tend to kind of you can focus on or fixate on is the reflections in your glasses and that's something that um i tell people you know it's something that you'll see and you'll notice but nobody else will notice like a reflection in your glasses because that's you know absent the extreme case um right. but that's you know it's it's something our brains are used to seeing and we don't notice it on somebody else mm -hmm. um, but a good photographer like you would see that when you're taking the photos yes. yeah. and you, so, would, you know you can have them tweak and move their lenses right. or you adjust their lighting right i mean that's right. something you could work right. around. And like, yeah so like i said to yeah. the extreme but um yeah so there's a lot of little tweaks that i'm doing behind the scenes um, yeah. sometimes people will even stress out about a little bit of reflection to start to see the light in the or the you know the lighting equipment in the, yeah. in the glasses and i say you know it's not not a big deal um but yeah, you you want to be comfortable, and that's the number one thing. So whatever you can do to make yourself comfortable, um, and then you know I have to take it from there, and that's where we go into the you know making some jokes and um, goof around a little bit um, just to get you kind of at ease. And that's one of the reasons too that um, people are sometimes surprised at mm -hmm. the, the session length. Um, now I have kind of some different options, but you know if I tell people that if you want to you know, a, a yearbook photo, then, you know, you get, that's what you get in, you know, five, 10 minutes, you know, so, because it can take, um, it takes a while sometimes just to warm up in front of the camera. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are really comfortable in front of the camera and some people are not, and it takes them a while just to warm up. And so that's one of the reasons that, um, you know, we go for 45 minutes if you need, and, you know, that gives you a, an opportunity to change clothes and that sort of thing too. Um, now, do you recommend that people bring multiple outfit changes when they go to a professional headshot or should they just bring one with them? Well, it kind of depends on your your objective. So if you're just looking yeah. for like a LinkedIn update, um, you know, usually, you know, one outfit is fine. You just kind of wear what you're okay. going to come in with. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing, you know, so like for yourself, you know, you're more of a personal brand um, mm -hmm. and you, you know, you, you do bring different clothes and, and that makes sense for you. You know, you've got different, um, you can have different looks on your website. You know, sometimes right. you're going to have a, you'll have an image on your contact page and your about page. Mm -hmm. 
and probably your homepage and your landing page. And so all these, all those can be different images or looks with different outfits. And so that's really where I recommend kind of bringing those extra outfits. So, if, and that it usually is again for co uh, coaches, consultants, um, sometimes attorneys that have like their own practice, um, mm -hmm. people where that you know that they are their brand. Um, those are definitely the the clients where I recommend kind of multiple outfits. Okay, and I'm pulling up on screen right now. I just found it the the blog that I wrote mm -hmm. back in. Gosh, this was oh, in yeah. 2018. So the photo that you see here at the top, guys, this is the the pink photo that I had. And and when Scott was talking about, you know, creating like images for social, I mean, he took me standing against a, a, a white wall and mm -hmm. there was like white space on both sides of me. And then he provided that image so I could have um, space to put text, you know, on my website. And then I also, you know, scrolling down, you can see here kind of the evolution, if you will, of Brenda Miller. Yep. And, you know, back in the day, let me see if I can make it a little bit larger here my 2011, 2015, 2016, those are all my corporate photos. And when I went to Scott and I said, part of the reason I wanted to get a new headshot photo is I wanted to make sure that my, my headshot photo felt like me and my personal brand. And that was changing. I was no longer a corporate employee. In every one of those photos, I had a gray suit or a navy suit or a black suit. Mm -hmm. And I said, Scott, I'm not wearing a suit. I don't want to wear a suit at all. Right. And I brought in a couple different bright blouses and things that wouldn't have been appropriate for my previous career. But now as a consultant, I kind of feel like when I, you know, as a public speaker, you get out on stage, you want to be bright and, um, you know, your outfit has to kind of send a message. And even like the top I'm wearing today, it's, this probably wouldn't be good for a headshot photo, right, Scott? The lines? I don't think uh, yeah, sometimes the the lines and the stripes can be a little more distracting. But yeah, the solid yeah. colors, you're, you know, you're, that image, I really like that image because it's yeah. so, it has such a pop to it. And, but it's, but it's so simple. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, I think you mentioned too that, um, you know, we get people that will hold on to those images from 2011, and yeah. um, you know, I it and I know kind of looks like me, right, Scott? I mean, right. maybe like like yeah, three um, hair colors ago, right. like, hair length has changed, right. and I don't know about you, but like when I see a person and their LinkedIn headshot photo is clearly not from this decade or even you know millennium, <laughs> it's like it yeah. was 1980. Five, yeah. Maybe. yeah, and I, I, I am automatically go to okay. Well, if they're not telling me the truth about what they look like, right? What else are they not telling me the truth about, right? Right. right. <laughs> and, and sometimes it is, you know, it's just a very honest, um, you know, personal anxiety. And yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 I try to tell people that, hey, look, you know, let's let's give it a try, and you know, I think you'll be be happy. Um, and you know, the other thing too is, I think it's a especially in today's world, you know, video, photo, you know, you've got to be, you want to develop some comfort or camera presence. Um, and the thing I'll, I'll tell people a lot is that nobody is worrying about, you know, the, the things that are driving you nuts, whether it's your, you know, your blemishes or your, you know, the circles under your eyes or, you know, your roots, because um, we're all worrying about those things on our own faces. Do you and, worry about um, roots, Scott? I don't think well, you do. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy to see the roots. I'll take the roots. roots. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Hair, hairline. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> in that sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really, like it's not, um, you know, it's it's not as big of a deal as I think you can get hung up on uh, because yeah. I think you want to look like your professional best today, though. That's the, the right, the right, way, right, right. Yep. You want to be uh, representative. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I talk about a, a like a coffee shop test, which you know we you know probably not going to be meeting in coffee shops, but yeah. Um, you know, kind of, you could think of it as a Zoom test too. If somebody can't yeah. recognize you, you know, on a Zoom call from your current image, then, you know, that's a good sign that it's time for an update. I even joke sometimes because I go on a Zoom and I have that thing set up in Zoom, Scott, where um, when you first join, it shows the photo that's linked to your mm -hmm. account, like my professional headshot photo. Yeah. And then you turn off the photo and it goes to video. And I'm like, whoa, I look a little yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not like, it shouldn't be like, is that the same person? It's right. more like right. this is casual, Brenda. That was professional headshot photo. Yeah. I mean, it should still be like in the same family spectrum, not like decades difference or, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Yeah. Um, we talked about, you know, getting, um, wearing comfortable clothes, mm -hmm. wear glasses if you feel, if you normally wear glasses, um, you know, allowing for, for some time for the session. Yep. What other tips do you give people um, when they're talking about getting an amazing professional headshot? Um, you know, I, I would say too that we'll, you know, we'll look at, 
you know, maybe they've got, uh, maybe a friend has had a session and they have, you know, kind of some inspirational images. Um, that's okay. something we'll look at too. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you've got, you know, if you have a website, if you're working on a website update or a new template or something, um, that's always good to get a, a feel for. So I'll tell people, you know, if you've got a, a template picked out or your web designer has some kind of mock-ups, because then we can sort of shoot for that um, layout and that's that's helpful. Okay. Um, you know, like what sort of spaces you need to fill. Um, you can kind of get a sense for colors sometimes mm -hmm. um, and any backgrounds, that sort of thing too. Um, and then, you know, sometimes people will have background preferences too, so we can talk about that. Um, yeah, like natural, you know, outdoorsy or gray or black. Yeah, or yeah. And I, you I know, behind you, Scott, you're in the studio today, it looks like, is that yeah, right? Yeah, that, yeah, no, that's actually a green screen. But, but, but yeah, <laughs> that, is my, that is my real studio. Um, and so I do get people that are asked, that will ask about, um, you know, can we go outside and, and that sort of thing? And I say, well, you know, if it's January, you know, do, do, do you want to go outside? Mm -hmm. um, and the one thing that we can do pretty easily um, is swap out a background. Um, okay. so we can photograph you in the studio. You know, I'll use that that wall, you know, one of those walls in there that you can see. Um, and then you, you know, we can pick out a um, a stock background that works for you. And I do that with a number of some of my corporate clients, whereas they have new hires come in. Um, mm -hmm. We'll come in the studio, so it's a nice, simple appointment. We don't have to worry about timing or weather or anything like that. And then we just drop them on the 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 basically the company backdrop that we've selected. Okay. So it's kind of like um, a green screen effect type of a move. Though, it right? is. It is. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's super flexible. And, you know, then they've got the the, the version on white too. So if they needed to do anything else with it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm still surprised that, you know, people don't seem to realize that that's an option. Um, yeah. Because so living in Michigan or any, you know, anywhere in the Midwest. I mean, there's so many factors, you know, even when it is nice outside, yeah. you've got humidity, you've got wind. You, know, you just never know. Yeah, good point. You, you made me think of something. I don't know. Backgrounds made me think of patterns and colors, which made me think of. I remember from our headshot photo session, you know, before we booked it, I and I asked, was asking you questions about what should I wear. I mean, what do you avoid in term, or what what do you advise clients to avoid in terms of, you know, patterns, white, stripe? I mean, is there any any kind of no nos for headshot photos, or does anything go really? Um, I wouldn't say there's aren't th there are. There are very few hard and fast rules, um, okay. but I do tend to steer people away from um, like fine patterns. Um, like, okay. like the shirt that I'm wearing now is probably wouldn't be my first choice. That would be a casual photo. I mean, yeah, it, you know, casual look. Um, but what happens is that sometimes with the patterns, the cameras can kind of it kind of tricks the cameras a little bit, and you can get kind of a weird like um, patterning effect. Yeah. Uh, and so usually I recommend solids for the most part. Um, yeah. You know, now that doesn't mean you can't go crazy in the colors like like you do. Um, I like I like a good solid color like a pink. Not striped because even like right now I'm like, is my shirt crooked or is the camera yeah. crooked? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not. It, 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 I think the patterns can kind of play a little bit havoc on your your eyes there. Yeah, yeah. The biggest so. thing, or one of the the main thing too, I, I try to emphasize too, is just the fit. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, you want to make sure make sure things are properly fitted. And I know that you know sometimes we're not crazy about wearing the most fitted clothing, but um, yeah. that is super helpful for posing because mm -hmm. if you're wearing like a big bulky um, sweater, you know, you, then you don't have any uh body parts to to work with essentially you know you're just all yeah. one big uh big space Safe, and, yeah and, yeah because one of the tricks with um you know you get kind of beyond headshots and you start to do like three quarter portraits or something which mm -hmm. still come out you know like even in your website you can use a lot of um and something as simple as just having a little bit of space between your side and your arm makes a yeah. huge difference in just kind of the the shape yeah so that's yeah, really great tips. I mean, we could probably talk for hours here, Scott, but yeah. I, I want to be respectful of your kind of calendar and time. So what I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to pull my phone up here because I'm going to actually look and see the comments that are coming in from, from folks um, as they've been watching. And I've been floating a couple of the Facebook comments up, but I'm just going to remind you guys at this point too, if you do, if you are happening to watch on facebook.com slash Miller Marketing, I can actually pull your comments up on screen. And I've been doing that um, throughout the session. So um, 
I'm going to, I'm going to throw this question up there for you, Scott, while I'm looking at the LinkedIn comments, but Julie is asking, what are your ideas for background photos on LinkedIn? And I'm guessing Julie, you're probably referring to that rectangular header. So Scott, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, yeah. So for, if you're talking about the header, um, then I think, um, you know, you can go with something organic, um, or you go with just a kind of a seamless studio backdrop. Um, and that's one reason why I like to shoot like a wide, um, even like the, I think the shot that you showed of, of you, Brenda, earlier, um, yeah. where you're just kind of standing against the wall because we can easily stretch that, um, stretch the size of that image so that will fit in that background. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of a nice thing too that, that people don't always realize is a possibility. Um, so you can use like a nice tight head and shoulder shot of yourself and we just add that background to the, the right or left of you. And then you can add your graphics or, um, yeah. So like that's an, a, you know, you can yeah. drop yours, uh, you know, you drop an image in there. Um, or like the way I have mine set up, I think on LinkedIn is, um, I have an actual session. So it's kind of like a behind the scenes shot over my shoulder. Yeah. Kind of, it's like, it gives people a glimpse into what you do, right? Yeah. So it's kind of showing me doing, you know, doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good, that's a good option too. So depending on what you're doing, um, you know, that's something to consider uh, as well. And then, and just in case you're talking about the actual background for the profile photo, mm -hmm. I always like um, white. You can't go wrong with white. Uh, yeah. Really have a nice pop on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Plus you too, you got to remember that, you know, your image is going to be pretty small for most people. And so using a nice high contrast background will really help you kind of bounce off the page. Mm -hmm. and, um, kind of emphasize your your face and that's really what it's about i mean it's you want to maximize the the space that your face takes up in that in that uh in that circle because you you know you don't have that many pixels to use so you want to make sure you use them all kind of maximizing the space and i'm, I'm going to pop yep. over to stewart's profile here yeah, Stuart. and with me last week but he mentioned that you had done headshot photos for his team mm -hmm. so a little shout out, shout out and he's a fellow show team member too yep. Yep. All right, so um, I want to kind of walk through here, Scott, a couple of the comments that are coming in from folks right now on LinkedIn. And if you guys have any additional questions for Scott, I'll just uh, let you know to, let's see, where is it? Questions for Scott. Do you see this little ticker guy going on here? Enter them in the comments below. So any questions about headshot photos before we um, end our session, enter those now. It takes about 30 seconds for me to see your comments. I'll give you a little bit of time. So let's see, we have Excuse me, Sonia joining us from Toronto. Hello. So we're international. We're across the border. Yeah. Right here. There you go. We have uh, Abrima joining us from Gambria. We have Sohan from Greenville, South Carolina. Babette from uh, Connecticut. We have Kathy Matt. Hey, Kathy. She's joining us from Shelby Township. We have Zakoyo joining us from Kenya. Jamie from Wayne County. Michelle from Sylvania, Ohio. Hey, Michelle, how are you? We have, let's see who else here. Um, Stephen Quinn is from Ireland. So Stephen, what time oh. is, is it about 12 hours ahead or eight hours ahead? I think he's, I think he's at the later part of his Monday, wherever he's at over there. Stuart. Happy, happy hour. Happy yeah, hour. something like that. Uh, Princey is here from Metro Detroit and Scott, um, this is just a little shout out for you from Stuart. He says, Scott Lawrence does great work. He did my whole team that allowed us to use individual and group shots. Hopefully, Stuart, you have given Scott a LinkedIn recommendation. If not, you should give him one now. I'm looking at you, Stuart. Give him one now. You could like literally copy and paste that into a LinkedIn recommendation. That's right. That would be perfect. Yeah. There you go. Bob Lurie, um, he's been saying for months now he needs to book an appointment. So good question here. I mean, um, Scott, I kind of feel like where we're at right now, everything is kind of locked down. We can't do too much. Um, and I know many of the ladies in my network and even the gentlemen, they're like, okay, as soon as the hair salons open, I'm getting in to get my color done or my yeah. hair cut or whatever. And a lot of the guys, um, Paul, I don't know if Paul's watching today, but Paul, he, um, Paul Sherwood, he, his hair keeps growing and he's got a very full head of hair. And he, he's, he's, he says, not me. He says he's starting to feel like he looks like a troll now because his head keeps growing and it's very thick. But I think like we're going to go in this order. It's going to be like, okay, we've gotten our groceries. So now we're going to want to go get um, coffee. If we can go out and get a coffee in public or something. And then we're going to go to the hairdresser and then maybe the non um, medically necessary appointments, you know, the mammograms, right. which I like the things that right. we've been putting off. We probably need to get around to. Yeah, but then yeah. not too long after that, Scott, I mean, headshot photos are going to be like the ones that we waited for either 
corporate engagement photos, family. I mean, those are going to be not too far away because we've been waiting so long. So I would imagine you're going to have a swell of clients. Um, are you taking bookings yet or how are you handling this process right now? Yeah. So I've got, um, I've got probably a couple of weeks worth of, um, clients kind of lined up, um, ready to go so that at this point, you know, you can sign up for a time on my, on my website right now. So I'm, I'm taking appointments in June. Okay. Uh, we do need to move that back. You know, we can move them back. Uh, there won't be any, uh, you know, rescheduling fees or anything like that. So okay. if you want to get on the schedule, you know, you can, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll play it by ear. You can move it though. As yeah. long as you get in the queue, so to speak, it's kind of like when you go up to the deli counter and you're, right. you're waiting for right. the pounds of line, yeah. so you got your number taken. So yep. you're going to go next. <laughs> yep. And I would say too, you know, if you're really, you know, for whatever reason, if you need to get something updated, um, but you're a little concerned about your hair, you know, we can, we can do a quick shoot first and then, you know, I'm, more, I'm trying to decide if I should do an offer, you know, some sort of like, you know, if you come back in yeah. a month or two after you've gotten a haircut or color or whatever you need, um, you know, that I can give you a, a break on a, on a quick reshoot. So let okay. me know if uh, you guys think that would be be beneficial okay. or for people would be interested in that. Not a bad idea. So I, I've got a really good question from Linda Morell. Linda asked, and I'm curious about this, Scott. I've tried and I, I've not had really good luck with this. Linda says, have you ever tried to convince someone to do a new headshot because theirs was so old and it didn't look like them? So <laughs> how do you bring this? Because I've tried to, what I usually try to say to people, Linda, to, to for me to guide my discussion, I'll say, my guidelines on LinkedIn headshot photos, I really recommend this should be taken, you know, within the past five years. So my question back to them, I don't say your photo sucks, it's 20 years old. What I'll say is, um, Linda, when was last, when, when did you have that photo taken? And, you know, Linda might say, oh, it was probably five years ago. I said, so it was from 2015 to present. And, and then she might be like, well, maybe it was a little older than that. But like, you don't want to press people to make them feel uncomfortable. So how do you handle that, Scott? Do you handle it or do you not? I, it's touchy, right? Yeah, it's a hard question. People, people will tell me, you know, they'll, they'll often say, you know, who really needs a, you should yeah. talk to so-and-so. And that's, yeah. you know, I don't like. You're not going to reach out and say, hey, everybody says your photo sucks. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. I mean, I think that the best angle, or the kind of the, the approach that I would use is kind of like along the lines of what you're saying is that you, know, you can do so much more now if you haven't had something done in, you know, 10 years, you know, the lighting, um, <laughs> just the processing, there's, you know, lots, it's come a long way, even the backgrounds too. That's, that's one way that you could kind of mention that your image looks a little dated without maybe offending anybody. Is that, then you're talking about the lighting in the background, you're depersonalizing the reason. Yes, I like right, that. Right. Or yeah. the, you know, that the backgrounds, you know, even those couple of corporate backgrounds that you had, you know, those yeah. are relatively date, you know, dated. They'll yeah. you know, they'd say, you know, it's pretty obvious. Those are from, late nineties or, you know, early two thousands. Right. Right. Cause they were kind of like the muted mauve and taupe and yeah. And you know, you, it kind yeah. of reminds you of the school photos from way back yesterday. Right. Right? right. But yeah, that's a great question. And I'm curious if anybody else who's watching right now, if, if you've experienced that or, you know, what advice you would offer to people? I mean, I, I like that Scott is kind of taking a deep personal approach and saying, um, and, and I've even said sometimes too, it looks like the photo's a little bit uh, a little bit older because it's kind of not very crisp. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit pixelated, and I think the the photography has has come a long ways. But I I usually try to kind of say, has your been, photo been taken 2015 to present? Like if you give them a time range, I mean, some people are gonna say yes, it was, and I'm like, no, right. it wasn't. I can tell, yeah. <laughs> and the world can tell. But it's we hold these 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 truths inside ourselves. This is what I look like today. It's the best version of myself from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, all you can do is, is just try. And it's kind of like when you have an AOL or a Hotmail email address, it yeah. still works. It mm -hmm. still works. Yes, it still works. It, emails come in, but what message does it send to people when it is not a current email? Like those emails do not exist anymore. It kind of says you never moved on from the past. Yes. Right. And it's a bit of a psychological process kind of letting that go. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, and even if you've changed industries too, you know, I mean, that's a good, you know, odds are your look is probably more casual now than 15 years ago. So that's one reason too, is that, Hey, you know, show off that new blazer or, you know, that new, you know, nice new coat or whatever you got too. That's right. 
Right. Subtle. Yeah, that's true. And, and and styles change, you know, not just hair colors, yeah. but even patterns and colors and suits and things like that, those change over the years too. So let's see who else we have on here. Kim Boudreaux Smith um, agrees, be natural, wear what you normally would wear and be seen in glasses and such. And she's got a really nice outfit and glasses in her headshot photo. Um, we have someone watching from Cape Town. Uh, Phyllis, mm -hmm. she says, probably would take me a whole day. I'm never comfortable with my pictures. I mean, I think she's talking about the headshot session itself would probably take her a whole day. Yep. And Hey, Phyllis, I hear you there. It's it's awkward. And, and when I was with Scott, I was like, oh, it just feels so weird. And, you know, when you work with a good headshot photographer, they're going to make you feel because they're going to talk to you and they're going to guide you through the process. And they're, if, if you look stiff in the photos, I mean, a good person like Scott is going to help you to feel, feel more relaxed until they can capture what they feel. But I think that's human. It's a human element, isn't it, Scott, that you're, you should feel uncomfortable looking at a camera because it's not a natural. Yeah, I mean, even right now I'm looking at my video camera and it feels weird, right? right. Everybody's a little self-conscious of themselves, you know, and of course on video, you know, we we don't like how we sound to ourselves. Um, it's the same idea. But yeah, you, you know, you go through it once or twice and you start to build up some some comfort level. And, you know, the, the ironic thing, of course, is that, you know, we're most of us aren't afraid to do all the selfies in the car. Yeah, uh, right. You bring out a quote real camera and you know people freak out and yeah, it's an interesting interesting dynamic. Dynamic it is. Yeah. It totally is. Um so a couple other comments came in here. Um Ashling says keep your wrinkles they are a part of you. Guys, look at my wrinkles. Aren't they beautiful? I got these laugh lines over here. You know why I have these these laugh lines and smile lines because I smile and because I laugh. These are not bad there things. It's the same thing like having wrinkles on your hands. I remember seeing a photo of somebody who was an old person and these are badges of strength. You know, the fact that you can see wrinkles on your hands and on your face that is a gift because wrinkles are only given to people who have been um, on this earth for a very long time. And some people are denied wrinkles because their lives have been cut short. That's so, right. you know, be proud of who you are, be proud of the skin that you're in. I think that's a really great point. Right. Well, and I would um, add too, if, you know, if you, you know, as you're marketing yourself, you know, if somebody wants to work with somebody that's 25 versus 55, you know, there right. are very different reasons to work with either one of those people. And, and there are, there are no wrong answers, but it's, there are very different preferences. Right. And you got to be honest about, who you are otherwise it's going to be a little awkward once they see you in person yeah no exactly i think you want to kind of sync up like i like your coffee shop test analogy like mm -hmm. if you walk into a coffee shop is that person going to recognize you do you look like that person mm -hmm. um and you know you don't want to be overly photoshopped either and i think that's something i work when i was working with you you're like well we're just going to do some light retouching we're not going to make yeah. you look like a different computer generated version of you. We want to, we want to just make sure we look at you at your professional best. If your eyes are a little red, we're going to, you know, take that redness out, but nothing major. You're not going to like do an overhaul on that person. right? Yeah. And that, that's a tough one too, because what, even when I send proofs over, you know, I try to kind of make a, a smaller proof sheet. So you're not looking at a huge yeah. resolution um, proof of yourself. Cause that's tough um, for a lot of different reasons. Too many choices. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of choices and you know, you're almost life size. And, you know, I, I want to remind people that, you know, on LinkedIn, your, you know, your picture is maybe the size of a postage, a postage stamp. Tiny. Yeah. And so any of the, you know, the smaller blemishes you're, you're not even gonna be able to see. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where that kind of the bigger, the kind of the bigger items matter. It's more about the clothes, the the kind of the overall expression in the background. Yeah, uh, you know, a little either wrinkle or gray hair or you know blemish or something like that. Not going to be too visible. Yeah, awesome. Well, here I have something I've always wanted to do, Scott. I'm going to take a picture of you. So look look towards me. <laughs> okay. It's it's just going to be funny on YouTube. Look go. towards yeah, me. Okay. Like smile. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do it again. Smile. It's just going to be funny in the UTL thumbnails because it's going to look like I'm taking a picture of it. <laughs> so that might be my version of what goes online with the YouTube. That's good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> well, Scott, we're reaching two o'clock Eastern time here. Um, we've had a really great conversation. I could continue to talk to you and I know you have so many great resources for folks. Um, so I'm just going to throw up on screen here. We've got LinkedIn.com in S Lawrence three is Scott's URL and you're open to accepting invitations from folks, Scott. Yeah, so all the the booking information is on my website at, at scottlawrencephoto.com. Um, you can check that out. We can do session or a Zoom consult. Um, and you know, if you have any other questions too about organization uh, images for your organization, that sort of thing, you know, we're got to figure all that out um, as things open back up. But we awesome. can look at all sorts of possibilities. 
Okay, perfect, Scott. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Hopefully we got, I, I know you had so many great resources to share about getting a headshot photo. Any final comments for the group here? Um, you know, just, you know, go with somebody you trust and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but it, but it's an experience and it's, I think it's an important experience um, to kind of go through in, in kind of our visual world today. Uh, yeah. So give a, give a photographer a, a um, you know, trust in them because that's, yeah. that's what we do. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. You pay professionals for a reason. You know, we, we add value when, when you're working with somebody professional, right, Scott? That's right. Yeah. Good. That's right. All right. Well, on that note, um, I just want to thank everybody for watching. If you are watching this in playback, still leave us a comment later on. I'll send Scott the links to the videos on Facebook and LinkedIn so he can still see who's watching the session here today. If you have any additional questions about Headshot, if you'd like links to any of those resources and you weren't able to pull them on screen, you can message Scott on LinkedIn, go to his website, check him out on his YouTube channel. So many great tips that he's offering for folks as you're looking at updating your headshot and making you look your professional best. And then just a little plug here for my, my list, mellermarketing.com slash subscribe. Um, if you subscribe to my VIP e-news, I send about once a week emails uh, with upcoming LinkedIn live sessions, as well as notifications about upcoming events and LinkedIn strategy tips. So definitely check that out. Scott, thank you so much. It was a pleasure being online with you here today. Are you going to be at any other Troy Chamber events coming up, the online events that they're doing? Yeah, I think I think we've got one tomorrow morning. In fact, um, ah. sure we're probably getting ready for it uh, as we speak. Yep. I think I will be on that session tomorrow. So we'll have to come up with a creative Zoom background for that session. Right <laughs> All right. <laughs> All Thank right, you. Scott. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate All it. All right. Thanks, Brenda. All right, guys. Have a great day. Stay safe and have a great week ahead. I'll look forward to seeing you on the next time we have social media. Bye. Take care. Bye, Bye. everybody.